Balance of system is just a fancy word meaning all the other stuff. It's not the motors or the controller or the batteries. It's switches, fuses, and other things that at first glance might not seem all that important, but they're important in terms of safety of the vehicle and how you control it. Uh, most of those parts you can actually see right in the wiring diagram. If I look down here, I'm going to see a power wiring fuse, a main contactor, a precharge resistor for the main contactor, uh, an on-off switch for the system, and a couple other small components. Uh, some of these components include the main fuse, the ammeter and shunt, uh, battery shutoff, uh, the main contactor with the precharge resistor, the key switch, and a DC to DC converter. So we'll go through and we'll cover each of these in detail. To start with, the main fuse is pretty important. What that does is it's a, a device that fails in case you're pulling too much amperage. That's going to be rated the same as our controller. In this case, we're gonna use a 300 amp fuse. All the power goes through this fuse. Um, it's kind of the number one safety feature on your vehicle. You absolutely have to have one. And the other thing, order a spare so that when you do blow the fuse, you can replace it. Uh, keep it on the vehicle and set up the fuse in a, a place where you can actually replace the fuse when you need to. Uh, the last thing you want to do is design a fuse that's impossible to get to. Another thing we're going to need is an ammeter and its matching shunt. Now in my case, I built the ammeter into the tank right up here uh, where it's easy to glance at while riding uh, and also it's an analog meter. Uh, for example, over here, this is a digital voltmeter and this is an analog voltmeter. Digital is great because it can show you uh, very detailed information, but it's not good at showing you relative information. Uh, just for example, here I've got a couple other uh, analog meters and what's nice about them is as you drive, the meter will sweep because most of the time you really don't need to know exactly how many amps you're pulling. You just need to know if you're pulling a lot or a few. It's really relative that that's what you're looking for. So that's why I chose a analog ammeter. The other thing to keep in mind is the ammeter is really only the display half of it. The other half of it is the shunt. Uh, the shunt is a calibrated hunk of copper that all the current runs through. So your one battery cable connects to the one end of it and the other end to the other. So all current flows through there. And then we have two smaller screws. Those two screws go to the actual ammeter display itself. Uh, and then it's just that little bit of difference in voltage between those two screws that goes to the ammeter and it shows you how, how much current you're pulling. Now the other thing to keep in mind here is they come in different scales. So on this one, if I look on the front, it says 100 amp, 50 millivolt. 50 millivolt is like the, the units that it uses or the multiplier. So the one thing you need to keep in mind is that the shunt needs to be matched with the ammeter. Make sure they're both 50 millivolt or both 75 millivolt. Also, the shunt and the ammeter need to display the range of current that you're going to be using. Now this is only a 100 amp maximum uh, shunt, so it's going to be a little bit too small for the motorcycle. The one that's actually in the motorcycle is 300 amps, and then on the ammeter display itself, that also can display up to 300 amps. The other thing to keep in mind is that there's a polarity to this. Current is running one direction through here. It's direct current. Um, so these two screws going to the back of the ammeter have polarity. And if you get them backwards, when you accelerate, that needle's going to try to dive to negative numbers instead of positive. So uh, make sure you hook this up the right direction. The first time you go for a spin, if you see the ammeter's trying to go down instead of up, all you need to do is swap those two wires. Another important part to have as part of the balance system is a battery shutoff. I like this style uh, plunger key. Um, these are really common for oh, boats and a lot of different things to just be able to disconnect the batteries. Uh, this is a great way to make sure that the motorcycle is completely shut down and powered off. Um, that's something that you wanna use when the vehicle is stored or maybe you're showing it off at a, a car show or something like that. You wanna be able to completely disable the vehicle 
all you need to do is uh, pull out this key. Uh, again, this is a device where all the current runs through it, so you need to make sure that it's, it has the correct amperage rating for your application. Although a lot of these look very similar, the cheap ones are not rated for very high current. This one is. So again, always make sure that all your components are rated for the appropriate level of current that you're using. The main contactor is kind of your giant on-off switch for your entire system. Over here, I've got a couple of different types, um, sort of a range of styles and sizes. Um, the main thing is it's an on-off switch where your battery cables connect to the two main power connectors, and then the two smaller connectors on here uh, take a, a lower amount of current, um, sometimes even a different voltage. For example, this one takes 12 volts through the two small connectors to complete the circuit between the two big ones, although the circuit of the two big ones could be something higher than 12 volts. This is a good style of main contactor. Uh, it's sealed up, it's uh, pretty resistant to corrosion, um, it's got a couple of bolt holes here to mount it down, uh, and this is the style that I'm going to be using in the motorcycle. There's a couple other styles. Uh, this is just slightly different. This is not the um, high enough amperage rating for the motorcycle. A little bit too small there. Uh, this is another style. This is common on forklifts. Uh, it's a very heavy-duty contactor, uh, heavy-duty power connections, and then down here, these are little signal connections. When you connect power to those, it closes the main contactor, which allows current to flow through here. Uh, this is actually the contactor that I had on the very first version of my electric motorcycle. It worked fine. Uh, really, the only downsides to it are that uh, it's a bit bulky and it's, uh, it's not sealed up the way something like this is. I figure motorcycle is an on-road vehicle. It's being used outdoors and I want to minimize anything that uh, could get uh, any kind of corrosion going on in there. The other thing that you have to keep in mind that we see right here on our wiring diagram is a pre-charge resistor. The pre-charge resistor basically short circuits or bypasses the two main power connectors on here. Now what that does is it allows a trickle of power to go through even when this switch isn't turned on. And the reason why, why we do that is to pre-charge the capacitors in the controller. If we just turned on power through the switch, all that juice would go into the controller very, very quickly. The capacitors in the controller have the ability to suck that juice up really, really fast. And after they do that too many times, they can get wrecked. They can blow up, poof. And sure enough, you don't have a controller anymore. In fact, I actually had a faulty controller once upon a time that ended up dying on me. Um, it was just... Uh, improperly built, it was under warranty, it was replaced, but this is what can happen if you don't use a pre-charge resistor. So you want to make sure to have that pre-charge resistor in there. Again, uh, basically with a pair of ring terminals, bypassing or shorting across those two main power terminals. Now, that also means that you pretty much always have power going through your system. And that, again, is one of the reasons for that uh, battery disconnect, is that that then is a way to completely disconnect power from your system. So without this in here, none of the power is going to go to here through that pre-charge resistor to the controller. Keep in mind that even if you have this pulled out and there's still power in the capacitors in the controller itself, there's still a little tiny bit of juice in there um, that does sort of uh, dissipate over time. But uh, anytime you're working on the cycle, you do need to keep that in mind. Now over here I have a key switch. Uh, that one is electric. Uh, basically you turn the key and it completes an electric circuit. In the diagram here, we're going to see a key switch. Now, chances are your motorcycle already has a key on it. When I got my cycle frame, it was kind of beat up and the ignition on it was just completely wrecked. It, it didn't have the key or the ignition at all. So I had to replace it instead with an electronic key. I put that right down on the side here. Uh, pretty straightforward. It's an actual keyed key. Uh, but it's uh, electronic. In this case, it's a double throw, double pull switch. 
That means that it can, uh, essentially it's two switches in one. When I turn the key, it's connecting both a 12 volt circuit that turns on the headlights, the taillights, all the regular motorcycle stuff. And then it also turns on a 48 volt system to activate the uh, power to the controller. It connects our main contactor. It does all the other electric motorcycle stuff all with just one key. Now in this case, I also decided to put it down uh, more or less where a fuel cutoff would have been uh, on the motorcycle. A few motorcycles out there uh, also have the key on the lower left like that. But chances are you've already got a key on your motorcycle. So all you need to do is where you see the key switch in the diagram, follow the wire harness colors uh, from the key on your handlebars, take that down to a relay, and then connect that in the position of the key switch. It's really pretty straightforward. Now one more thing that we're going to have that uh, actually doesn't show up in this diagram is going to be the DC to DC converter. And we'll cover this in detail in just a couple of minutes. Now what I've found is, okay, we've got all these parts uh, and we've got the diagram, but how do we put this all together? Because if we're trying to assemble this one at a time into the motorcycle, how do you mount everything down? Boy, it seems like it's going to be kind of complicated and all these little parts, how do we fit these together? So this is again where cardboard aided design is going to come to your rescue. Instead of trying to attach all these individual parts singly to the motorcycle, it makes sense to connect them all onto some sort of a sub panel and then have that entire sub panel mounted to the motorcycle. So let's use a little cardboard aided design to figure out how to fit all these parts into the bike. So down on the side of the motorcycle, we're just gonna see how much room we have to work with, what we have for putting all those extra parts. So if I remove our little side cover, and then I just use a piece of uh, some scrap cardboard, basically just fit that in where I have the space, right about there, above the motor, to the side of the batteries. And let's see, we can come out to uh, about here-ish, and about that tall. So this roughly is the space that we have to work with to put all those components and still have them be able to mount up in the motorcycle, kind of hidden away under the seat and hidden behind the side cover. So now we know the size that we're gonna work with. So I'll just trim that down. And I know that all these parts need to fit right onto this piece of cardboard. So to start off with, I'll do the key switch. Um, it's not that big from the end. And I'll just uh, use my trusty Sharpie marker here. I'm going to have the battery disconnect right next to it. My fuse will go up about here. and the ammeter shunt below that. And then finally, my main contactor is gonna go over here. And I'll also wanna mark any mounting holes for both the components and actually mounting the plate itself. So I'll just mark that I'll drill a couple of holes in the corner to mount this whole thing when I'm all done. Uh, you may also wanna mark, mark the sizes of any of the components, uh, like the mounting holes on here, you can measure those and mark those right on here as well. And you can mark where the cable's going to go. So make it a little easier uh, to cable up for yourself. Now another thing is since all these components are going to be really close together, um, you might not have the flexibility with uh, power cables to make these fit exactly where you want them to go. In that case, uh, these work really well. These are just uh, 
copper bus bars. Copper bus bars are just uh, a conductor used in place of a cable. They are rigid, which actually works really nice if you've got everything mounted down together anyways. So if you've got some bus bars and it makes a difference, you could put one right on the end there, see where the next component would lay out, and then mark them in place there. But now that we've got our cardboard aided design layout done, we can use this as a template to make the same thing out of metal. And then when we do, mount all the components down to there and then mount those components into the cycle. And we've got our balance of system.